Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas McGinn, the Executive Vice President for the Physician Enterprise at Common Spirit Health. Today is Monday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. February is also Heart Health Month. So today we're going to have a guest speaker, Dr. Faluji, join us to talk about a new medication in heart failure. But before we get to that, we're gonna give you an overview of what's happening in Omicron across the United States, a quick moment to discuss anticoagulation upon discharge for COVID patients, briefly review an interesting article on the uptick in use of melatonin. So let's get right to it. So let's look at Omicron across the United States. And if you can see in this graph, we're down by over 40% in the positive cases. That's below 200,000 per day on a rolling average. In addition, we're down by 25% in hospitalizations. And most important, for the first time, we have a rolling average of drops in mortality of above 5%. So this is good news across the United States. It's also very reflective of what's happening here at Common Spirit Health. The positive tests, hospitalizations, and mortality all on the way down. It does mean we still need to be educating our patients. They still need to get their vaccine for COVID. They still need to get influenza. And I would recommend they still wear masks in large indoor gatherings. So let's take a quick look at a publication that came out from the American Society of Hematology. And this is an update on what we think about in terms of anticoagulation for patients we discharge from hospitals who have COVID. And right now they came up pretty straightforward not to offer anticoagulation in patients we do not suspect have a PE or DVT. I think we're gonna learn more about that as we do a better job risk stratifying patients upon discharge. But for now, this is the new recommendation. Now let's take a look at a recent publication on the uptick in use of melatonin. Now you may think this is not related to COVID and it's not directly related to COVID, but I do know the issue of sleep hygiene and our ability to get a good night's sleep has been disrupted by this pandemic and it was already on the rise. So we need to really understand what our patients are doing. A couple of important facts. First of all, melatonin while over the counter is a hormone. Number two, it's poorly studied. We really don't understand how impactful it is on sleep. Number three, we don't know about drug-drug interactions, particularly in high doses. Number four, there are variations in the amount of medication and melatonin in each over-the-counter medication our patients are taking. And at the higher doses above five milligrams, there is concern about drug-drug interaction. So as you can see in this graph, this very interesting study looking at the NHANES database from 2000 to 2018, looking at the usage of melatonin in over 55,000 adults, average age of 44. And what's interesting is the prevalence of use went up from 0.4% to over 2%. And that's a quadrupling of its use. And that number was similarly high and elevated in the five milligram dosage, which is the ones that we're concerned about. So again, I think this is an important issue for us to one, ask our patients what they're taking because we frequently don't hear about that when, when they talk about their quote unquote prescribed medications and think about how many they're on, how often they're taking it and ask them about their sleep hygiene. So now let's turn to Dr. Faluji, who's an interventional cardiologist and the vice president for the cardiovascular service line here at Common Spirit Health to talk about a new trial that was just published in the New England Journal regarding heart failure. Thanks for being here, uh, Dr. Faluji. And it's appropriate because this is Heart Health Month uh, that we're celebrating. And so tell us about this trial and, and, and the design and the results on that. Yes, thank you, Dr. McGinn. Uh, this was the Emperor Preserved Heart Failure Trial. Um, it was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in October of last year. The trial evaluated the impact of impagliflozin, which is a, a sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitor, also known as Jardiens, which is an easier name to use. Much easier to say, much easier. Yes. Uh, in patients with heart failure, in adults with stable symptomatic heart failure, uh, but with a preserved left ventricular systolic function. Uh, the trial was a multi-center trial. It was conducted in over 600 sites, uh, in enrolled nearly 6,000 patients in 23 countries, randomized to so Jardians 10 milligram daily versus placebo and followed the patient for about 26 months. Uh, the primary endpoint, which was a very typical endpoint in heart failure trials was a composite of uh, cardiovascular death versus uh, or hospitalization for heart failure exacerbation. And this was reduced dramatically uh, by the medicine with a uh, absolute risk reduction of 3.3% with the number needed to treat being 30. 
driven mostly by reduction in hospitalization for heart failure, right. not so much for mortality. It is a massive trial. I mean, to do this trial at this many sites and, and in a randomized fashion like this is quite remarkable. What, what is special about this? You know, you and I talked before this, there are so many heart failure medications out there and you know, we've all been managing heart failure in our clinical practices for decades now. So why is this different? Well, we have been successful in managing patients with heart failure secondary to impaired LV systolic function. However, the, those with a preserved ejection fraction over 50%, we have had a dismal outcome with various other modalities that were successful in the reduced ejection fraction subset, but not in this particular group. So this was actually the first meaningful study with an impact, at least on hospitalization reduction in this particular right. population of patients. So these are basically hypertrophied muscles. These are patients predominantly with hypertension, I would assume. Yeah. yeah. In, in fact, oh. two thirds of the patient did not have ischemic heart disease. I mean, um, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a new tool for us then. It is a new tool, and I think what the trial had showed us is that in, in a stable patient, especially functional class two and three, who have been on a stable diuretic therapy but have a preserved ejection fraction, this would be the proper therapy to start in the clinic and follow the patient uh, uh, thereafter with up titration of other medications as needed. Great. So we're going to have a full discussion on this at an upcoming Grand Rounds, uh, which is very exciting. And I think that, you know, we're going to work with Dr. Faluji and the physician enterprise to figure out a protocol for this so we can start making sure our patients are receiving this new medication. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Thank Faluji. you. And finally, I want to thank everyone who nominated a colleague for the new physician enterprise awards. We received over 500 nominations. That's amazing. And I know it's a lot of work to put those through. We're going to celebrate those awards on April 19th. They're currently being reviewed, and I'm really looking forward and excited to hear about the winners. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you at the next five minute check-in.